Thanks for the introduction. Good morning, everybody. All right, blockchain. So we heard a lot about blockchain technology in 2015. And at times it seemed like there wasn't a problem that the blockchain couldn't solve. You could track the provenance of fish from, your, uh, from the shipping container to your plate, uh, sneakers, all sorts of, of, of applications. And it became very fashionable in certain circles to, to say that you didn't like Bitcoin, but you thought that blockchain technology showed a lot of promise. And it really, it really gets to the issue of why are we all here? You know, what's really exciting about Bitcoin? What's really exciting about all this new technology? And how is it that so many people have very different ideas and different visions of what, what we're doing and what's possible with this? So I want to start by, by uh, taking a look at that this morning. All right, so if you, Bitcoin started as a peer-to-peer -peer electronic cash system. That was, you know, that's what it says right at the top of the Satoshi white paper. That's the original vision. But it's kind of expanded beyond that. And I like to think of Bitcoin's, the vision of Bitcoin as a global open commerce platform, allowing anybody to exchange value with anybody else around the world. It's a censorship-resistant platform. It, uh, it doesn't require any intermediaries to transfer value. And uh, people look at Bitcoin as a way to disrupt incumbents and change how we do business. Well, blockchain technology has a different value proposition. Really, it comes down to being able to track everything. Having databases that talk to each other, where you can track every single transaction, you can know everything that's going on inside the network. And so, so let's take a look. These are two companies, or, or, or two projects, I should say, that are on the opposite ends of the spectrum. And DropZone is a new protocol that's being developed that is an anonymous contraband marketplace. So what that means is that you're able, all the data within DropZone is in the Bitcoin network. Think of it as like Craigslist with payments where the listings and everything else is actually inside Bitcoin. And the reason this is important is because the, it's completely censorship resistant. You can't stop people from posting this information. You can't stop people from trying to find it. If you look at uh, R3, you, that's a consortium, r 3 CEB is a consortium of 42 banks. And what they're trying to do is build a regulatory compliant financial platform. And so they're looking at similar types of technology, but they're building or, or working with companies who are building private tools that create this sort of closed uh, environment. So. The drive again drop zone, all the data is on a public network, and with other types of things, it's on a, a private network. And so, this has been the paradigm that everybody's been talking about. Is everything going to be on Bitcoin, or is everything, or is this other private blockchain permission ledger type thing really going to take off? But my company, Tyrion, we thought, is there another way? Is there another way to do some of the things that you might want to do? with these private networks that doesn't require everything being in Bitcoin, which is, which is limiting um, in terms of transaction speed, uh, the amount of data that you can store, the number of transactions per second that are supported, and doing things in, in private blockchains. So we built Tyrion. And Tyrion allows you to create a verifiable record of any data or business process in the Bitcoin blockchain. So we're leveraging the scalability, I'm sorry, the immutability and security of the Bitcoin network, and we're solving the scalability problem where we're able to process many transactions to and link them to a single Bitcoin transaction. So here's how it works. If you're a software developer, you can send data to our API. We will go ahead and generate, we'll, we'll take that data, we'll generate what's called a blockchain receipt, which is a portable proof that you can use and save in your own database that's proof that that information is linked to a Bitcoin transaction. We can do this at scale for millions of records. So there's no altcoin that's required. There's no private blockchain. If you want to be able, if you're a software developer or you're building a tool and you want to be able to create a verifiable record of any piece of information or any business process, you can do it through our platform and you can store all the information in your own systems. There isn't a, a long-term dependency on any outside party. So this is what a blockchain receipt looks like. It's just a piece of information, and uh, it links all of your 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 data to uh, the Bitcoin blockchain. <clears throat> I'm just gonna skip over that. We're short on time here. So instead of going into some of the features, let's talk about what companies are doing with this. 
So Philips is a customer. And Philips, um, you guys know that they make televisions and light bulbs, but they also have a huge healthcare business. It's their largest business, actually. It's 42% of their revenue. And um, uh, they've done a couple prototypes uh, with Tyrion, and some of which are being rolled, um, introduced to customers as we speak. So the first thing that they built was a tool that was collecting data from MRI machines. They wanted to create a verifiable record of the usage and maintenance history of an MRI machine. And that allows them to be able to lower their legal liability if there's a problem, and also has some implications for uh, insurance. And they're exploring opportunities for using Tyrion with all sorts of other uh, industrial medical equipment and devices. We also built a program with them called Flu ID. And it's a, it's a program to increase the number of people who get flu vaccines. So Tyrion is used to collect data from doctors about patients who should get flu vaccines. Um, old people, sick people, children, things like that. So we would collect the information, we would uh, generate an email with a QR code that would get sent to them, and they could take that to an integrated healthcare provider, and the, the QR code would be scanned, the relevant patient information would be uh, shown to them, to the person who's administering the flu vaccine, and then they would mark that that flu vaccine had been administered. And we were able to track that entire process across multiple systems, creating a verifiable audit trail for all of the activity. And that's useful for things like regulatory compliance and insurance reimbursement purposes, medical coding and billing. You're, there's a lot of fraud and a lot of mistakes that are made in that particular world, so we're helping them solve that problem. An interesting application from a startup company um, is a company called Block Notary used Tyrion to build a new solution for a Russian mobile payments processor called PayMe. Now, PayMe has about 30,000 units out in the world, and they have a problem with credit card fraud. Um, Russian criminals are using uh, mobile payment terminals to launder money with credit cards. And so what they had to do to combat this is start having everybody do an in-person interview in order to get a mobile, uh, to, to uh, do a background check and uh, uh, do an affidavit in order for them to get these mobile payment terminals. And so they wanted an easier way to be able to do this, to be able to verify the identity and get all the information for a background check, but not force people to actually go to a physical location. So here's what was built. They made a mobile application. And the mobile application is this is called Video Interview, very creative name. Um, but what it does is allows a you know, person uses it, you hold up your, up your phone, and prompts come up onto the screen, and you read off a statement, you flash your ID, and all the information for the background check and for the interview process is collected. And all of that, that whole process is anchored into the Bitcoin blockchain, and it's verifiable. So they, by having the confidence that the information would be collected and was verifiable, it gave them the ability to say, you know what, we're comfortable in, in moving this away from an in-person process. And it's actually better for them in many cases, because now they have a record and they're not, waiting, they're not just relying on the, um, uh, I guess you could say, the, the, the version of events that happened from whatever clerk or person interviewed that, that person who was applying for this. All right. All right, so today we're uh, launching something new. It's called the Tyrion Explorer. We've made it very easy for people to use our platform to collect information, and now we're making it easy for people to publish it and share it. So within Tyrion, there's something called a, a data store, and that's where all of your information gets, uh, gets collected and then stored. And with a few clicks, you can actually publish an API now that links to all of that information. So you have a collection of information, all of which is anchored into the Bitcoin blockchain. An example we have up on the screen is the uh, Coindesk Bitcoin price index. So, if you were writing an application that was using the Bitcoin price index for market data, for different types of calculations, let's say an over-the-counter trading application, you would now have a verifiable record of each individual tick, and you'd be able to uh, retrieve that information here uh, from Tier. And so, really, what we're doing is we, we're building a platform, but where we started is building a platform for verifiable data. And there's lots of different applications. We uh, launched in September, and we've seen a lot of creative uses uh, for Tyrion. Um, some of what I talked about, but other things, uh, mortgage applications, being able to track how information is collected and how it uh, flows through the, the process of a mortgage. Um, we won the Coindesk Hackathon by building an insurance claim processing application that uh, created a verifiable record of the entire claims process on the Bitcoin blockchain. And so, something, uh, so, uh, 
one final thought is that with with Bitcoin and blockchain, you have you have very different worlds, and the people with, who are using Bitcoin, they're trying to find a way to create this open platform for innovation that's permissionless and that disinterrupts intermediaries. And with with blockchain technology, what you're really seeing is intermediaries and existing incumbents looking at the technology and finding ways to either uh, fortify their monopolies or establish cartels or just fortify their market position, being able to track something and audit it and being able to have a, uh, a top-down view of everything that happens inside that network. And there's value for both, but I feel a lot of times, especially when I talk at these types of events, that people talk past each other because they're talking about things that are very, very different with the, the, the same terms. And so one of the things that I hope we can get out of coming together and having this event is being able to, to, to talk and talk about these ideas and find a way to sort of separate the two and create some distinguishing characteristics and vocabulary about them so that you know, you're not seeing uh, so much um, tension uh, between the two groups. So if you're a software developer, uh, I would encourage you to go to Tyrion.com and take a look. You can sign up for our API for free and start exploring using it for your applications. And thank you very much for your time this morning. Appreciate it.